Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So in this video, I'm going to show you the settings for Dolphin MMG emulator. So I use Dolphin MMG emulator for most of my gameplays. I don't use the Dolphin standard emulator. You can also use that. There are a handful of games that don't run properly on the MMG built of Dolphin emulator. For those games, we have to use the standard built of Dolphin emulator. But these settings shown in this video will be applicable for standard built of Dolphin emulator as well. Now the thing is that I have already created a tutorial on Dolphin Emulator but a lot of new settings have been introduced since then so I thought why not create a new video. Newcomers often find these settings confusing. Now before starting let me tell you this. There are no fixed settings for every game. We have to tweak the settings for every game which we try to run on this emulator. But the good thing is most of the settings are set to default. Only a handful of settings are changed. So let me just start with the settings. So let's just go with the general settings first. Alright, here as you can see guys, first option is CPU core. Just set it to JIT ARM64 recompiler. It's the default setting. Now second setting is dual core settings. I have enabled it. You need to keep it enabled for most of the games. But there are a handful of games that will crash if this setting is enabled. For example, Contra. That game won't start if this setting is enabled. So if your game immediately crashes, then try running the game with this setting disabled. With this setting enabled, you will get a tremendous increase in performance. That is why you need to make sure it's enabled before starting any game. Then third option is very important. This is probably one of the most important setting in this emulator. Override emulated CPU clock speed. Higher values can make variable frame rate games run at a higher frame rate, requiring a powerful device. Now the thing is guys, with this option enabled, we can change the emulated CPU clock speed. There are a lot of Wii and GameCube games that run with an unlocked FPS. Now if you have a powerful device, then just enable it and increase the emulated CPU clock speed. Generally, I use three levels. I use 45% emulated CPU clock speed on low-end and mid-range devices. It basically lowers the FPS cap and makes sure that the emulation speed is around 100% so that the audio does not start up. The next level is around 60%. Now this is the sweet spot. It makes sure that the FPS is not limited by that much and also makes sure that the emulation is around 100%. Then lastly, we have 100% override emulated CPU clock speed. I mostly use these settings on the powerful devices like OnePlus 7. It definitely helps in getting high FPS along with 100% emulation speed. For example, in NFS Most Wanted on OnePlus 7, I set it to 100% and OnePlus 7 was able to achieve mostly around 60 FPS. So if you are getting low FPS along with stuttering, then I would suggest you to lower your emulation CPU clock speed to 45%. You can also experiment by lowering it further. Only a handful games will be playable with emulated CPU clock speed being less than 45%. It would really reduce your FPS cap. So before tweaking with this setting, you can try running the game with it disabled. If the game is playable, then you don't need to use this setting at all. Make sure speed limit has been set to 100%. Now this option is also very useful. Sync on skip idle. Wait to process events until the GPU thread finished. Basically, it helps in getting 100% emulation speed, which will help in reducing the audio stuttering. In most of the games, I keep it disabled. But there are a handful of games that won't run properly if this option is disabled. For example, Resident Evil Code Veronica X. Make sure in that game, this option is checked. Otherwise, there will be a lot of stuttering. So I would suggest run the game first with this setting disabled. And if it's not running properly, try enabling this option and seeing if it helps in increasing the performance. Make sure this option is enabled, GIT follow branch. And all other settings here are left as it is, you can see. So let's just check the graphics settings now. So first we have the video backend. We can select from OpenGL and Vulkan API. For most of the games I use OpenGL. You can also use Vulkan API and see if the game runs better with Vulkan API. Now there are some games that won't run properly with OpenGL. For example, Sims 2, Samurai Warriors. Recently I uploaded gameplay of Samurai Warriors and with OpenGL the screen was completely black. But with Vulkan API, the game was playable. So if you are observing any graphical bugs, try changing the video backend from OpenGL to Vulkan and see if the game is playable. Then we have show FPS. It does just what it says. It displays the FPS counter. 
all other settings are left as it is again i am not tweaking anything sometimes i enable this option compile shaders before starting this causes a delay when launching games but will reduce stuttering early on so you can enable if you want then we have this aspect ratio just make sure it is selected to stretch to window basically the game will use the entire screen of your phone and the black bars on the left and right side will be removed so let's just move on to the next section then we have the enhancement settings yeah so here as you can see guys first we have internal resolution very important setting this is the resolution at which your game will be running so for low end and mid range devices i always suggest running the games at 1x resolution which is 640 by 528 till snapdragon 712 processor i recommend 1x resolution if you have a better processor than snapdragon 712 only then you should go to 2x resolution now 2x resolution is the sweet spot you can see 720p resolution and on snapdragon 845 and snapdragon 855 game runs very nicely at this resolution you can also enhance the resolution to 3x and 4x but i never recommend this resolution because the thing is guys it will put a lot of load on your mobile's processor and battery at 4x resolution the temperatures really go very high and it's really not good for your mobile in the long run at 2x resolution the game looks very sharp and going over this resolution only provides diminishing returns at 1x resolution i admit that the game looks a bit pixelated it's up to you you can try these different resolutions but if the game is running slightly slowly then it's highly recommended to drop the resolution and to see if the gameplay improves now the thing is guys some of the games are cpu bottlenecked if the game is bottlenecked by your cpu then changing the resolution won't impact the performance there are a lot of games that run similarly even when you are running it at 1x resolution or 2x resolution because these games are bottlenecked by the cpu and not the gpu so try experimenting with these settings again if you have a low end or mid range device stick with 1x resolution for high end devices i recommend 2x resolution all other settings here are left as it is i don't tweak any of these settings the second option is full scene anti aliasing it basically smoothens out the graphics remove the jagginess now this will affect the gaming performance so i have set it to off anisotropic filtering improves the visual quality of textures this is also set to off if you have a very powerful processor only then you should be enabling these settings post processing effect has been set to off all other options here are left as it is to default settings you can try experimenting with these options if you want but i just leave them as it is so these are my settings after changing any setting just make sure you tap on this floppy icon here to save the settings let's just check out the next settings then we have hacks the hack settings are left as it is set to default i never change these settings only particular games require these settings to be changed on the github page of citra mmg emulator when a particular build is released in the description it's mentioned which hack setting needs to be enabled or disabled in order for a particular game to run otherwise don't tweak any of the settings here again you can try experimenting if you want but these are my settings and you can see they are left as it is they should be the same for you as well okay let's just check the next section then we have the interface again all settings here are left as it is these are the settings that i am using then we have game cube and v system settings so first let me just show you the v settings here as you can see guys we have v remote continuous scanning i have already shown you how you can connect the dolphin bar to the dolphin mmj build so to connect dolphin bar you need to make sure this option is enabled so if you want to connect dolphin bar to dolphin mmj build you can watch my video the link for the video will be given in the description then we have the v remote speaker setting again dolphin bar is required so if you are using dolphin bar you need to make sure both of these settings are enabled enable sound output through the speaker on a real v mode here this setting is very important guys system language you can see i have set it to english now for example some games have different languages like xenoblade chronicles now if the system language has been set to japanese and you run that game the entire game will be in japanese language from text to voice so if you want to switch the language to english you need to change the system language from here just tap on it and select the desired language if those audio and video files are present in that game the game will switch to this language which you will be selecting here at the system language all other settings here left as it is this pl60 option forces the pl games to run at around 60 fps 
the thing is that pl format games are used in european regions and in the us region ntsc format games are used now with pl format the fps is slightly lower but the resolution is slightly higher as compared to the ntsc format there are some pl games that don't start if you have not enabled this option so if you are encountering such problems try enabling this option now the same thing goes for the gamecube settings you can see guys system language can be changed from here i don't use any other setting from here lastly we have the debug option it's not for the general user so i would ask you to ignore these settings you can see there's a warning mentioned here the setting will slow emulation it's for the debugging mode so that's it with the settings guys in my dolphin emulator tutorial i have already shown how you can map the controllers to dolphin emulator very easy process you can see p input and gamecube input has been mentioned you can even map the v mode controls to a standard controller so if you want to learn that you can watch that video so guys i'll end this video here i hope you found it useful thanks for watching and have a nice day